Welcome to Music and Medicine, and I'm your host, Dr. Moshe Lewis. I'm excited to be joined by Petri Hawkins Berg, Mindy Abair, and Herman Jackson. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to start with you, Herman Jackson. You have okay. been and worked with legends. Legends. We want to know how did you how did you get started working with Motown? I um, <clears throat> moved out here when I was 19 from Detroit, and I knew a lot of. Barry Gordy's, some of his family members, and they were very instrumental in keeping me working and getting me working. Probably one of the first jobs I did was at Joe Bet, which was actually the publishing company for Motown, and they had a demo studio, and I would go there with my buddy Tommy Gordy, who was one of Barry's grandkids, and he would engineer and we would play demos, we would do demos for the writers. And um, yeah, he would engineer and I would play these demos. And that was probably my first interaction. And then later on, I toured with Glass Night and the Pips and spent 25 years with Stevie and did a lot of work with Smokey Robinson and a lot of other Motown acts. Sure. And then from the keyboard, what exactly got you interested in actually playing and having that be your key instrument? <clears throat> my, my mother, my mother and my grandmother both played piano. I would be my grandmother and she would be going to different churches and playing and I would just be always around the piano. So I was like three or four when I started playing and I was seven when I started taking lessons. Wow. And for you, Mindy, saxophone became your key instrument. Did you also start super young? Was it just something you were attracted to, something you saw that just made it happen and made it magic for you? You know what, I grew up on the road with my dad's band. I mean, I was basically born and they put me in the band truck. So I was just a kid, you know, watching, uh, you know, my father play every night and he was a sax player. And it was this super, just, you know, high energy soul band. And so my dad was that guy on sax that was, you know, shimmying and shaking and knocking his knees <laughs> together and walking the bar. and. I was lucky enough to have a school band. In fourth grade, they just, you know, laid out a bunch of instruments and said, choose what you want, you know? And I looked at that saxophone, I was like, I'm gonna have as much fun as dad had. <laughs> so it was, it was easy, and I have. <laughs> Let's talk about that early influences. Who were some of the people that really spoke to you in terms of their music and you felt like, okay, I just at least admire what they do. If I'm certainly not gonna copy it, I'll have my own style, but they influenced you. I think, you know, a lot of saxophonists grow up with, with jazz and that's kind of a normal thing. I didn't. I grew up with soul, with my father playing, and my grandmother was an opera singer, just stereotypical, you know, huge woman, huge personality. But then I watched MTV constantly. So I, I grew up just thinking I would be basically a lead singer with a saxophone. You know, I watched the girls in Heart, Anna and Nancy uh -huh. Wilson, I watched Tina Turner, strut around the stage and I watched Clarence Clemens with Springsteen and I just thought I want that I want to give everything on stage and I want to emote so I, I kind of came at music a little differently than I, I think most sax players I ended up going to school with or most sax players that are making records now you know it, it's uh, it, yeah I kind of came at it from the other direction like let's bring rock and roll to the right. sax right. But it's, it's, it's lively I mean your performances are very invigorating awesome Petri, we haven't forgotten about you. For all the influences, I know you love them all, oh and it's hard to even pick one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if you can narrow it down. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I remember my grandmother always playing this song on the little was in her, her bedroom. Oh woman, oh woman, don't you treat me this way Cause I'll be back on my feet someday Don't care if you do, cause you just ain't no good Well I guess if you say so Gonna have to pack my things and go That's right, hit the road, Jack Then there was Otis Redding My oh. mother would play him all day, every day Every Saturday, right? So she's cleaning up all day long and and. She had the phonograph where the 
tone arm would come back over, right? If you left it open, it would come back over, yeah, yeah. over and over again. So, you know she may be weary. Young girls, they do get weary. Wearing that same old shabby dress, yeah, yeah. But when she gets weary, try a little tenderness. Yeah. So I, I became... I became a lover of Otis Redden in spite of myself. <laughs> but Stevie Wonder and this guy really, really influenced me. Um, this was on his, on his most famous album. Hey baby, what you no good? I'm just getting back, but you knew I would. War is hell, when will it end? How can we start to get together again? Are things really getting better? Like the newspaper said. What else is new, my friend, besides what I read? Marvin Gaye. Oh, absolutely. Man, my when, too. When, when What's Going On came out, that, that was it, man. That was, that was quintessential, like, voice meets music meets great lyrics, you know. And and on top of that, it was jazzy, you know. Um, I, I I understood that uh, Barry Gordy said that no good would ever come in that album. That <laughs> I don't Did know. You I don't. That? I don't know. I don't know what you're bringing me here. You know, Marvin, it's not going to work. And uh, it's it's on. I think it's on everybody's top ten list. Of Actually, ten. he said that he said that about what's going on. Right. right. Wow. Right. Well, right. I wouldn't even finish. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. The, the, that's right. The, the first. And they sent it to the record. They yeah. sent it to um, radio stations. Yeah. And started getting play or play. Man. Okay. We got. Man. We got to finish a record. <laughs> right. Yeah. We come back to you. Yeah. You got an album? <laughs> no, you didn't like it. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Just trust me. Just, it's okay. I'm, I'm very good. Yeah. 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 I, I changed my mind. You know? Health is one of those issues that certainly we cover in this show. And many say, people say that music itself can help heal the soul. What types of ways do you feel, we'll start with you, Mindy, that, that it's been helpful to help you find a place of, of peace? And also, no doubt, maybe you've also transmitted that to the public in different types of ways to help them get through some troubled waters. You know, it's interesting you say that. You know, when I'm on the road, there, there are... Uh times that you know when we're playing for a lot of people you can look down in the audience and and we watch you in the audience as much as you watch us and I'm looking into people's eyes and there are some people that you just see it that they're in it that they're they're just they're escaping or you see the joy or you see tears and as a performer that is that's the most moving thing. And if there's any, ever a time, and there have been times that I sit and go, wow, am I crazy? In one's life, it's awesome, but it, it is crazy. I look into someone's eyes and, and they're crying or they're, they're joyful or they're dancing and they're just you know, forgetting about the world around them. And it's, it makes it all better and I I look at this year 2020 and I've had none of that I've had no one's eyes to look into and see that but yet I needed it and so music has healed me I'll sit in and we were talking about this earlier that I'll sit and play on my porch and we'll put it out on Facebook live and and I'll just play for whoever's out there and it heals me it reminds me what I do and who I am and, and what music is to me. And, and so it's funny how it can change other people, but it can, it can heal me too. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty powerful. And have you noticed some of those types of things, Herman, too, as well, that maybe you're getting as much heart and benefit as some of that that you also communicate Absol to sound? Absolutely, absolutely. When you, when you hear, I like to hear my music on the radio with some people that I don't maybe know are there and they hear it and their reaction to it and they're they're feeling it and they're getting into it and that's it's just a great feeling and it's it's very healing it's very healing you know for them and for me to know that my music touches people. You know? 
And likewise, you, Petri, too, do you feel that there's a way that I'm helping deal with some of my own stresses, strains, but also maybe helping those out there that may feel, hey, I could do this too, or uh, I can feel better about today or tomorrow. Um, it's, it's funny, I, I sang in uh, church choirs and, and on worship teams, and I've seen the power of music to, to be able to uh, calm people's spirits and, and, and get people into a place where they can uh, they really feel that that God is watching them uh, and and is involved in their life. So, um, uh, and, and and for me personally, I'll be honest with you. I I, I hate to exercise. I, I I hate it. I hate it. But I time every exercise I do, especially the cardio, to music. You know. So like the other day, I found a, a, a 20 minute version of uh, James Brown's uh, Make It Funky. And, all right, so, so imagine now, Make It Funky for 20 minutes. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and I'm on, I'm on the, I'm on the uh, you know, the treadmill and I'm just like going, you know, like make it, you know. And the, and the thing about it is that you, you, you don't even notice, you know, the time going by, but you know, it's good for you, you know. And, easy to do when you have a musical background going, going with you. I love that. It's so important, we feel, to communicate to others that music can be a way to lift their spirits up, but also, like you said, we can use it ourselves to be able to exercise and take care of ourselves. Are there some challenges that you face as it relates to your health that you feel that music or just even things you've learned as you've gotten more mature have helped you to sort of not see it as something so overwhelming that you can't take it on? Well, I'm, I'm a type two diabetic and uh, uh, have been so for uh, probably uh, close to 10 years now. Um, and uh, my A1C, um, you can explain to them what that is, but my A1C number has been just above six, so about 6.4. Uh, and uh, I, I had a, an occasion where, where it increased. Uh, and it was, it was right after the holidays and, and uh, I had changed doctors. And so I went for an appointment in January as opposed to uh, October or, or April when I usually go. And the number came back like 7.1. I was panicked, you know. And so I talked to the doctor and it was like, uh, listen, I, I don't want to put you on medication. So if you're willing to exercise regularly and gave me a, a, a number to work my heart rate up to uh, and, uh, and eat properly. And um, I, I have a wonderful wife who is a foodie. Okay, she loves to cook. And I in turn am the perfect match for her because I love to eat. <laughs> but, but we talked and we, we, we planned, uh, we, we got to the point where we planned our meals and we realized that planning our meals would be beneficial for both of us. You know, she is constantly, oh, I want to lose a few pounds and I am constantly like, yo, you know, I'm getting Let's older, I need to, you know, I, I need to eat properly. And so, you know, the, the teammate works the dream work, you know. And, uh, Absolutely. And we've been able to, I've been able to bring my A1C number down. Awesome. Uh, and maintain uh, a, a healthy, a healthy number and a healthy diet, uh, hopefully for longevity. Sure, that's the goal. For you, Mindy, when you're traveling and touring, what is your secret? How do you continue to stay inspired to eat healthy, stay in shape, and also keep the same level of energy that it takes to to be on tour and perform? You know, I've got a, a husband at home that just. He's in the wine business, you know. There's wine flowing in our house. It's, good wine, too. It's good. It's good, good stuff, wine. too. And red wine's good for the heart, so we just got to get that in there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, actually. <laughs> yeah, I had a bottle last night. It was good for my heart. The whole bottle was The whole good. bottle. <laughs> no, Two that. glasses. We have to make, make sure we do that disclaimer. But I, I have to say that... You know, we go out and, and we kill it on the road. There's no holding back. We're not standing in a corner, you know, just kind of playing our instrument. We give a thousand percent and it's a sport. And you really do have to stay in shape, you know. Um, 
as a saxophonist, usually we have neck problems because you see this this neck strap. You know, it's like you're you've got this you know thing kind of hanging from your neck the whole time. Guitarists have it too. They're just you know it's just a little different because they're to the side. But I've always tried to stay in shape so that this doesn't you know this doesn't get to me. Um, over the years, I've done yoga stretches before shows uh, and the same thing with singing I started singing more and more in my shows probably 10 years ago and it makes you be a better human being <laughs> it's actually been very good for me you can't go out and get drunk and be dehydrated the next day and sing a show you really it, it, <laughs> it, it pushes you to yes be better um, so you know I've definitely changed the way I've eaten uh, changed how much I drank, you know, drink a bunch of water and, uh, you know, just try and take care of yourself because because these things do happen. Um, so it, it's more a physical, uh, uh, you know, kind of thing that I, I try to keep in touch with because it is a sport. Like, you know, there's going to be one night I walk out there and go, whoo, you know, exactly. if I don't eat right and if I don't stay in shape, uh, and I, I don't want that to happen. No, absolutely. And for you, Herman, you've been doing this a long time. How do you deal with stress? It's something we all face and definitely can be a challenge. Um, any secrets, any things you've learned over the years to continue to stay in the game and not give up early? Um, stress. Stress is, um, yeah, it's a major... It's a major issue with me. I'm in a lot of stressful situations. I just kind of turn everything off and just, you know, 